Hey guys, my name is Haley Nolan from Artist Haley Nolan on Instagram, and you may also know me as the digital marketing specialist here at Moss Epoxies. Today I'm going to be resining half of this cutting board that I have right here and then once it's cured in a few days we'll go ahead and take some walrus oil to it using this cutting board care kit. So for the first step in this process I have turned my cutting board upside down so the top is at the bottom at this moment and now I'm going to go ahead and take paste wax and I'm going to rub it along the edges on the bottom anywhere that resin will drip so that I don't get any drips. This will harden the drips and then a couple days later you can go ahead and take a chisel or a sander or whatever you want to go ahead and knock those drips right off and I'll show you that later. You could also use painter's tape and a blade if you do not have paste wax. This surface is a little bit rounded on the edges so I'm gonna go ahead and use paste wax. Before you start using paste wax or resin, be sure to roll up your sleeves, put your hair back so that nothing's falling into the wax or into any resin, and then you're ready to get started. Okay, here we go. So, you just take a little bit on your fingers, I use these two fingers, and then you make sure to get it all the way to the edge. When you do this, you're definitely going to want to either resin straight away afterwards or the day after. If you wait longer, the wax might soak into the wood and dry up and not do the proper job. I go about an inch away from the edge on all the edges that are going to have resin in contact with it. As you can see, I'm being careful to not get wax on this portion of the board because I want resin to drip over the edges and coat the edges so that I can have a nice looking clean finish. I'm just making sure to get it along this perimeter which is going to be the bottom. Now that we're done coating the bottom with wax, I'm going to take these painter's pyramids and I will move this board out of the way because the painter's pyramids are going to elevate our cutting board off of our work surface so that resin doesn't pool everywhere. Now you can also flip cups upside down, you can use tape rolls, you can use anything that you may have that can elevate your piece from its working surface. Now I'm taking the board, flipping it over. This is the side that has the wax on it. So as you can see, it is a little bit darker. You can see it in the light easier when I tilt it. I have covered the whole perimeter of the bottom of the board where I'm going to resin the top of. I make sure that I don't put my hands in that wax because wherever you touch this board, it will repel. Now we're gonna set it on there and adjust. So it looks like I need to make the, put these inward a little more. Okay, now that I have it on the painter's pyramids, I'm going to go ahead and grab a level, make sure it's leveled so that my resin doesn't tip off one way or another and that it stays in place. I grabbed my level and now let's test it out. I always get eye level with my level. This looks good this way. And that looks great that way. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started. All right, so today we're going to be painting our resin ocean here onto our cutting board. First things first, make sure that you are being safe. Always have your respirator on with organic vapor cartridges. I'm not going to have mine on for the purpose of this video. This room is well ventilated with the windows open, so I should be good. I also have gloves on, my hair is pulled back, and I'm wearing safety glasses. That is just a couple things to keep in mind when you are working with products that can stick to your skin. So let's go ahead and get into it. Before I start, I like to make sure I have all of my supplies out and easily accessible 
to my left or to my right so that I'm not scrambling around looking for something that I may have forgotten. I have here a heat gun set up, plugged in, ready to rock when I'm going to blow some waves. I have all of the pigment colors that I wanna use. I have a mix all white, a mix all blue, and then a Liquitex acrylic ink blue as well. And then I also have my butane torch here. This is what I'm going to use to pop bubbles when we're done blowing out the wave after the heat gun. I have refill butane right here because sometimes I run out. And then I have my resin over here, moss tabletop today. And then I have cups to pour into. I like to reuse my cups. So sometimes they might seem a little bit dirty, but that's okay. We like to reuse them. And then I have a little cup to pour my white in and then I have a scale right here to weigh my resin. So, so when I start weighing my resin out, oh, this is a heavy bottle. I first start with part A because I have my resin calculator up right here, which you can find on the Moss Epoxy's website. This is a brand new bottle, so we're just gonna poke it open there. And then I like to clear out my scale to zero, so I zeroed out this cup and now I'm gonna pour to the amount that I need to fill the space that I'm going to be covering, which I am guesstimating today. I can do it by eye these days. I used to not be able to. And if we have a little extra, we'll go ahead and pour it into a mold. No big deal. Okay. Then I grab the cap after I wipe it down so that it's not sticky. So I have 152 here. I need to put that into my calculator. Okay. Part B, it says that I need 126 parts B. Let's go ahead and open part B. Ah, oh, that's so satisfying. Clear out the scale because it's easier than trying to add the math in your head. So we're back at zero and I'm gonna add 126. I have to do this a little slower than the first one. Okay, we're there. And then I wipe this one down as well. I always keep paper towels to the side, just in case for moments like this. And then when I don't need my epoxy bottles anymore, I go ahead and put them away. I have popsicle sticks to my left. I make sure my gloved hands are still fairly clean so I can move my phone. And then we move our scale away. And now we're gonna mix for three minutes. I mix circles back and forth, make sure to scrape the sides and scrape the bottoms. Sometimes I mix figure eights. It just depends on how I'm feeling that day. If you wanna prevent bubbles, slowly mix in figure eights. That's the best way, in my opinion. And three hours later, just kidding. I just don't wanna go turn off the camera. This is fun and switch. After I'm done mixing for three minutes, making sure the mixture is completely together, part A and part B are now one. I can't see any separation lines. I go ahead and pour a little bit into a smaller Dixie cup. This is going to be used for our white. I filled it about halfway. I scrape off the excess off the rim to avoid dripping. And then I'm gonna pour some in here for our blue. This is just a reused cup um, that I like to use. It's a little bit uneven at the bottom, has some resin stuck to it, but that's okay because we're not using it for measurement purposes. We're just using it to mix a color. So some of my clear is going to go in here. Almost all of it. off that edge and now we're going to mix our colors 
For today's purposes, I'm just making white and a little bit of a blue combination. So this blue is a little bit more transparent. This blue is a little bit more opaque. I picked a solid and a transparent because I want to put them both in here and only mix them up a little bit so that you can see the differentiation and then maybe see the wood through parts of the resin and not through other parts of the resin. Let's go ahead and do our white first. Since this Dixie cup is about halfway full, I'm gonna do a one second squirt, another one second squirt, and then stir it up. And as long as my popsicle stick is completely white and I don't see the popsicle stick through the white when I lift it up like this, it should be enough to make some lacing. Make sure you stir it up really, really well. And then for good measure, if I can't see the popsicle stick, that's a good sign, I add a couple more drops just to be sure. So I add one, two more, two and a half more drops, usually two for this amount. And that just makes sure that you've really got your bases covered. There, that looks nice, huh? Like honey. Pretty white, awesome. Now we're gonna mix our blues up. I've never done a blue like this before, so they're the first for everything. We're gonna try it. Let's do two two second squirts, or two one second squirts. This color in particular is called just kidding, I can't pronounce that. Thalocyanine blue. Thalocyanine. And this mix all color is called Mir Blau. Oh wait, that's like French. Ocean, ocean blue. Matt, don't even use that. And then I'm gonna add probably one squirt of this blue and see what happens. Like I said, I love not mixing it all the way. I think that's a pretty color. What do you think? I like it. I'll show you a close up later. I'm ready to pour my blue onto my surface. So I'm gonna close up all my pigments and move them away so that I don't knock them over like I usually do. Move my equipment out of the way. I know that I'll be pouring over here, blowing this way. <sighs> Not like that, but with my heat gun. All right, here it goes. I'm gonna pour my blue. I don't know how it's gonna look, but we're gonna see. This is the most exciting part. It's pretty, it turned out pretty. And now I'm just making sure I'm getting every little bit of the wood all the way around. Tell me if I miss a spot. Because I can't see. Oh, this looks so cool already. Don't get any on my new shirt. That's the goal. This shirt is new. We want it to be staying new. Ooh, this is so pretty. Okay, wait. Okay, now that our blue is down, that little bit of clear that I had left in this little bucket, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little clear line down where this blue ends. That'll give us some separation for the white so that when we blow it into the blue, it won't completely 
disappear and sink. It doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be a lot. I think it's time for our white, giving it a good stir. I like to play with timing and wait about 15 minutes from when I originally poured A and B together to then pour my white on. And I'm always extra cautious and add a little bit more white again, just to be sure. So I added one more drop of white pigment and we're gonna stir it really good. By the time I'm done stirring, it should be the 15 minute mark. I keep having hair fall into my face, in my mouth, but that's because I have a lot of hair. So when our white is ready, I personally like to scrape my popsicle stick off and put it to the side. I also scrape my other popsicle sticks off and put them to the side, that way they can dry overnight and I can reuse them. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then also I will pour whatever excess is left of these into some molds that I have to my side so that no resin is wasted and then those cups can dry for tomorrow and then I can peel out the leftover resin if there is any. I'm ready to pour my white. It's feeling a little warm, which is good. And I'm gonna start, mm, gonna start here along that clear line. Doesn't have to be perfect, like I said earlier. This is fun just purely for fun. If we wanna add some more to the back here, we totally can. Uh, I don't know if I want to though. All right, when I use my heat tools, I like to take my gloves off in order to keep my heat tools nice and clean, but then I add a new pair of gloves just so that if I accidentally touch any, we're still good here. So let me add that new pair on. And then we're gonna blow our wave out. I'll show you a close up once it's done. We're gonna turn our heat gun on and then I'm going to rub my hand like this in front of it to make sure that it's heated up. Never touch this. I turn it on the second setting, which is the highest setting and I have a little cone nozzle attachment. And then I'm gonna blow it out like this so that it has some texture to it it's not perfect. Let's try it. I'm warming up the resin. that. That's so fun. It looks great. And then for good measure, I always like to define my white line just a little bit more by pouring some more white right there. And then we're going to take the gloves off because we're going to hit it with our torch. Let's fill our torch up. Turning the torch on, make sure it's not pointed towards you. Oh, there. This is just popping any surface bubbles. And I'd say we're all set. It looks great. I'll show you it. It looks so good, I'll show it to you.
It has been a full 24 hours since we have poured this ocean onto our cutting board. So I'm gonna turn it over and we're gonna take the drips off using a heat gun and a blade. I'm just gonna warm up the drips and then I'm going to hit them with the blade. And since we already coated this in wax, they should be easy to come off. If they don't come off, I just go ahead and knock them off with a sander outside. Typically with this process, I would wear a mask, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to show you so that I can speak while I'm doing it. Um, I would also recommend that you just be careful you don't burn your surface or your hands when you're heating up your drips because the drips can get really hot. Let's get started. Now that we have all the drips off, I'm gonna head outside and hit this with a sander to get the remaining drip edges off as well as the wax. Now that we went ahead and sanded the back and the front and made sure that everything was as smooth as possible, we're gonna go ahead and add our walrus oil. So this awesome cutting board care kit that walrus oil makes comes with three things, cutting board soap, cutting board oil, and then wood wax. I am going to take this cutting board oil and then oil out the wood. So it's gonna make the wood a little bit darker. We're gonna go ahead and read the instructions because this is my first time using this product. Shake well before use, apply oil, and dry for 12 to 24 hours. Wipe away excess. Okay, simple as that. It also comes with this really cute little towel so that you can apply it. So that's what we're gonna do. The soap is for when you're using your actual cutting board. Now, when we use this board, we're only gonna use the wooden portion. So you wouldn't necessarily cut or serve food on the resin side. Shake well. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna take off the little thing. Brand spanking new. And then, I'm gonna go ahead and use the wood wax 24 hours after this sets because it says that they can be used together. This one has to dry for 15 minutes and then gets buffed out with the towel. Let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna pour it on the towel. Oh, that came out kind of fast. There we go. So now, this is what we're working with. And I'm gonna go ahead and let it sit for about 24 hours. I think I missed a little spot. And then I'll come back in 24 hours and we will hit it with the wood wax. It's been a full 24 hours that this has sat to cure. So now I'm gonna add the wood wax from walrus oil. We're gonna use the same towel that we used before, just a different area of it. And I've never used this exact wax before, so I'll read you the instructions, because I have to read them myself. Apply a thin layer of wax, dry for 15 minutes, then buff with a rag. Maybe used as standalone or with our cutting board oil, which is what we're doing with the cutting board oil. All right, so I'm assuming you rub the rag in here, that's cool, and then apply. 